Next up, I want to talk about sessions. Sessions, if you don't already know, is a PHP concept or a PHP utility which you can use to uh, identify uh, unique sessions and unique um, yeah, user requests which belong to the same user and save data accordingly in that specific session. Uh, PHP usually does that via a custom cookie which is called PHP session ID. Uh, so if we go to our app and here uh, I'm going to application cookies here we have the PHP session ID and some yeah unique string behind that and that's basically what PHP uses to identify a user and yeah be, uh, uh, save data according to that user. Now in Cake PHP you have the possibility of course to leverage that session utility and session functionality but uh, be aware that Cake PHP offers uh, a wrapper around the dollar underline session variable which usually is the way how you would use the session in a plain old PHP script. But yeah, um, the main thing I want to show you here is that you have a read metho mythology, you have a write mythology, um, you can delete session keys and yeah basically destroy the whole session as well. Um, but the main thing how you can get the session object, accessing the session object is via the request object. So whenever you have this request available, so either in a controller, in the view, in help us or components, uh, you can get the session object via calling get session and leverage all its um, functionality via that method. So if I go here into our, my app controller, so here I am in source controller app controller, again, the initialize method to just be at the very start of when the controllers are being run, I get the session object via this get request get session here. Yeah, just so you know, either if you uh, access the request object via the property directly, or use the getter method is basically, yeah, it doesn't matter which one uh, you want to use. I prefer the getter, but it basically returns just the same object, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, now we have the session object and we can write uh, some data to the current session. So here I'm writing to the key test, the value YouTube, and later on I'm reading that back. So yeah, basically, that I can see what is happening and that it is working as intended. And so if we go back now here, um, we can see as explained before, we have a session active and we have a PHP session token or cookie present inside of our browser. And if I now, of course, uh, PR that test and remove that write, so we are not writing again to the test um, session key and if I refresh the page now we can see now that the value is still in the session and even after refreshing multiple times yeah uh, it's still there so also when I change that value to um, another test I refresh the page so that it writes to the session and now I read the key again we now have another test. So yeah, basically basic um, session functionality. But what does this now imply regarding multiple requests and multiple, yeah, let's say browser tabs for the users? Well, currently our app is pretty fast and pretty, yeah, I would say small and nothing really can happen in that regard that two uh, tabs maybe load together in the same place. But let's just simulate that via going into our pages controller and just add a sleep 10 in there. So we are simulating some sort of either uh, long query data or processing something on a pages uh, on a page 
which is handled by the pages controller and now we can see okay it takes 10 seconds till the default home page is being loaded but let's just wait now till this is happens now okay the 10 seconds have um, passed and now what i wanted to show here now is when this request is happening and i want to refresh my second page it's still working now but the reason is because currently we are not doing anything with the session so whenever i'm reading something from the session and try to pr that again so again the first tab is loading and the second tab should instantly come up with what is present in the session but as you can see both are loading till the first one is done so we are now being what is called as session locked by the first page and the reason why this is happening is how php handles sessions in the file system so now if we go into our temp directory and see that we have now a session uh, file in there with our session data we can also see that this key which starts with f6 bc and ends with 6 ad is the same as we have here for our application f6 bc it's a little bit small let's just increase that and it ends in 6ad so this is basically the, the associated file in the file system on the server which saves the data which is re, uh, um, which is related to the session for the for the user but now as said before we are being locked from the file system because php locks that file whenever someone reads or writes to it so it doesn't matter if you're either reading or writing it will block that file and block any additionally occurring requests on that so that's basically what is happening here and why we are being blocked on the second page even though it should be fast but we are blocked by the first page because it is still not ready and the session file behind it is locked now what can we do to fix that problem well we have to change how our session handling is being done and in the kbhp session documentation we have a separate part in there which says which says the app skeleton comes pre-configured with a session config like this and yeah this basically just goes over what we have already just now um, seen and what is basically happening here and uh, to prevent that we have to change the way how sessions are being handled in kcphp by using a different session handler like the caching sessions combined with a redis engine or another engine so we can adjust our sessions config uh, either via writing to the configure um, to, uh, or using the configure write method um, but we can also just um, use the app underscore local or app.php file which we have in our config so uh, in the config in the app.php file at the very bottom you have this session section and yeah here is also uh, all the the default configuration explained but instead of using the default php config we are now specifying that we want a cache config and we want our handler to be called uh, or we want our handler to be used as the session handler and this session key now needs to be present as well in the cache configuration section so um, also again in the app.php file we have the cache section as well which we talked about before um, with all the default cake session configurations but now I've, I've added another cache section in here which says okay we have a session configuration for what we are trying to save here we are trying to save sessions session configurations 
and uh, we are saving that via the file engine so it needs to be a file uh, it is saved in the typical cache directory slash sessions and yeah another directory separator and our default duration is one week but yeah that's basically doesn't matter um, but with that now changed we can see if I go back that this is still loading but our second page is loading instantly so we have now prevented our sessions from being locked because now if we go into our temp cache sessions directory we, we have we now have a new file which was previously in slash temp because that is just my default PHP configuration um, but these um, these session files don't get locked via cake PHP or not locked in that regard that it has to uh, wait till the request is being done it just gets locked when it is writing or when it is reading but it is not being locked when the whole request is still being processed by another part of the PHP application now of course uh, saving sessions via files is not um yeah performance or very recommended for larger applications or production applications so as said in the documentation i would rather recommend you use something like a redis engine um, because redis is very fast and very yeah, performant um, to save such simple key value files um, like session files um, but yeah with that out of the way, I hope you now know what session locking is and how you can prevent it in CakePHP. You know what to do and I will see you in the next one.